job of being able to get open. Thibodeau, we've talked about all year, and Noah Sewell, if they're going to run the ball, number one has got to make a lot of plays in the middle of that defense. DP by far the leading receiver on this team. Sets up on the left. They run it that direction with Tavian Thomas, and the Ducks swarm him and stop him push you know they, they have focused this week on getting penetration not letting the big thomas let his momentum get his five you're right third and four rising tries to get it running leaning he's right near the marker they'll spot him just and they fight and push the pile i think it's going to be a first down when the dust settles. Wow. is wow not the first time, but on the push, they got it. Yeah, pretty pretty favorable spot. And I'm sure Utah will want it, want to go. But look, look at the push here. Does a good job getting behind the center. I don't know. I don't I don't know. The nose of the ball. I don't know where that right football the 50. is. They yeah. spot the nose right at the I 50. I, don't think I, got I just there. don't see he got to the 50 personally. I'm surprised they're taking their time. Jerry Meyerhoff is the replay official. And... They choose not to fuzz it down, and now in a first down throw, a slant is complete. Ryzen looking to throw again on first down. Flips it underneath, and the catch is made by Britton Covey, who cuts it back. Covey is the back now on first down. Ryzen keeping all the way. Can he get the edge? He cannot. Flying to make a play as Noah Sewell, one of the two Sewell brothers playing in this game. Nephi plays for the Utes. They, you know, the, their family's excited. You imagine being the parents with the championship on the line, Rose Bowl on the line. They're used to having their sons compete with the, each other, against each other. There they are. Got the jerseys there with the number one. Both yeah. guys were one split down the middle. Yeah. They, got, they got double use of those jerseys. <laughs> That's right. Right, the what? An impressive family. Panay Sewell is here. Gabe is the oldest brother. Down this season. He's got the football, and he walks. In. Watch him just read this. It's designed to go to the right. Does a good job of feeling it, cutting it back to the left behind the left. Rising. Escapes pressure and put in over the middle of this defense. This time it's covered. It's pretty good job by the defense. He steps up, which is a good job of climbing in the as well as Covey. And second and seven. Thomas. Tough to get to the ground, but Noah Sewell does wrestle him down at the 40. It'll be third in about two and a half. Fumbling problems early in the season. It was in the doghouse and then finally emerged, and he has become the feature back in the second yeah. half of the season. Yeah, he definitely, the combination of Rising and, and Thomas. Like a Bernard, the back in motion. As he's looking to the right, slant again. Catch made by one of those tight ends, Dalton King. Thomas knocked down. Utah uses more three. Fits well with Kyle Whittingham and what they do on defense. Second and eight. Thomas hit at the line and driven back. No gains. Rising another quick throw. That one is intercepted. Threw it right into the hands of Noah Sewell. And that's the kind of play Oregon needed to provide a spark. In this matchup of Sewell brothers, it's Noah who makes the first big play. Chris, you're going to love this. We just talked about how they're attacking the interior of this defense. Watch Sewell initially look here and then come off and pick up the second route. Watch his eyes. He looks inside, comes off, and then jumps that, that throw. Really good job, good instincts that time. Coming off the initial crosser, catching that second crosser, and then showing the athletic ability by the big fella. He's ran over a receiver. <laughs> Enos in the way. I mean, you, he is 255 pounds. Get out of my way. Been, poor Enos. He's like, I'm sorry, man. I just happened to be here. That's on me. Exactly what Oregon needed, but not only prevent the threat. On the defense to come with another stop. Ducks crowd the line, and Pletcher dodging guys in the backfield picks up a couple. Holly. We talked about Noah Sewell and the great play that he made early in this ball game. The Sewell family took quite a leap of faith. They relocated their entire family of six people from America, Samoa, to small town St. George, Utah. The four brothers and 
oldest sister, Gabrielle, they all went to different schools. All four brothers earned scholarships in college football, and the dad said, you know, it was hard. We had to relocate everybody. They were at tough ages from teenagers to young people, but we knew that opportunity awaited. And how about that? An NFL player and three college scholarships. I'll say they took advantage of it, and Gabriella has her degree as well. Well, Gabe, they're gave their good root for defense. No matter who's got the ball, the root for defense. Yeah, that's easy. Sons, yeah. right? Panay is here, and uh, Gabe played at Nevada. That's where Nephi began his career. It can't be an easy position, though. Gabe, a coach himself, what a tremendous background well, well, all those no, guys grew up with. Noah Sewell's obviously very well known what he's done last year and this year. And tendencies on early downs. It's Covey who comes in motion. They fake it to him. Rising has pressure immediately and escapes. Gets a yard before Sewell dragged him down. Uh, that time they, they get a little bit of pressure. Watch Thibodeau finally making an impact here. He forces him to get out of that pocket. First time we've seen him get a step on one of these offensive linemen. That time it was Bills, the left guard. There he is, ISO. See that speed and quickness, that suddenness. Almost got the rising. Rising, obviously, every snap when he's throwing it, he's he's eyeing five. And 300 hurdles in high school is also a high jumper. Hands off to Thomas and slammed to the ground. When, when Noah Sewell tackles you, you feel it. Love the vision of this big back, Tavion Thomas. He shows tremendous patience. You know, he was at Cincinnati, ended up going to junior college, CF play to the right, and he just read that that the offensive line and working all the way to the right, cuts it way back to the left, and that's too big. Big body. I mean, wow. On head to I mean, head Thomas there. is a hammer, right? Oh, He's a yeah. load to tackle. Yeah. Sewell. Keeper again. Rising. Stiff arm. Loses the football. Scramble on the sideline. By the way, look who he stiff arms here. You got the tight end pulling around. Watch right there. Look at number one. That's the big guy. Noah Sewell, 260 pounds that he gives that stiff arm to. He's fortunate, very close to fumbling that, and Bridges picking it up, but how impressive was that? He got Seven hands call. on the guy, doesn't get a flag in the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Not down. Nice start. Stands and delivers and overshot his man. Many different routes. Look at this, trying to stay up with these guys. And he just settles right there, and it looked like Cam was waiting. Wait. Second and ten. Rising with pressure. Closing in. Delivers a strike across the middle. Behind this defense, what I want you to see is what's going on with these linebackers and the communication. you got a back sneaking out of the backfield, Pledger, and the eyes right away. How many underneath routes have they thrown? Underneath, they're worried about it, and if you don't have a safety, Thomas mm, doesn't get too far, lost the ball. There's a scrum for it. Oregon says it's their third takeaway tonight. It's a back that had a lot of trouble, fumbled back-to-back -back games. They've Same got the control down. there. Yeah, they, he, he lost fumbles, then missed basically two entire games, didn't get a touch while being in the doghouse. He's fighting for extra yards. Ball is out. Whoa. It's just who's matter. Does he get it back? Yeah, Sewell punched it out. They, they were able to recover it, but you know when a back has a history of fumbling, they see it on tape. They're going to go after it every time. There's three Oregon players there, and somehow Utah gets it back. Thomas again didn't have a great handle on that handoff, and he's bumped out of bounds again by Sewell. He said Sewell knocks it out. Yeah, punched it out there. I'm just trying to see how he got the ball back. Like I said, you have McKinley's there, Sewell's there. He throws his right arm. How in the world did Sewell not recover that football? I don't see. They, they I, ruled that Oregon, uh, Utah possession. I don't know how Oregon didn't have the ball there. Who recovered it from Utah? Pledger is the back. Fake it to him, rising on the keep. Some tackles, rising in the secondary, weaving his way all the way down to the four-yard line. Feeding him, he collapses down on Pledger. Good job of pulling it, gets a quick block there by Keithy, and then he shows you that he runs with some physicality, able to break through some arm tackles and show some game. speed. First and goal here now, and Thomas barrels in. Notes. Like, to me, that's kind of corner you dream about. 
Bernard knifing into the secondary. Kobe comes in motion. They hand it off again to Bernard, who tries to bounce it, gets the edge, and is knocked down after an eight-yard game. There's a flag in the backfield. Holding offense number 77. Ten yards to the previous spot. First down. Just kind of, I want to go back to the previous play just to kind of watch 55. This kind of sums up the night. He locks up with Bassa, keeps driving him five, ten yards, and then just lands on top of it. With the Utes threatening again. Bernard knocked down behind the line. That's what they that's what they talk about is being a team that's got gonna You know it's Bernard Chris I, you and I've called a lot of games together. I since 14 we, you and I've been a ball bit spot off the loss Bernard in motion rising took a look dodged the tackle they still can't get into the ground it's another first we're talking about what's not right with Oregon there's a lot right with Utah and again rising bouncing off of Ben how well coached they are it's a good football team Ledger picks his way and they'll be and if it's Iowa it'd be the Hawkeyes in Utah Thomas again patiently picks his way, lowers the shoulder, and just runs him. Boy, this is a good run and representative of the way this night has gone. Nice job of waiting. Did you see Keithy coming around on that counter on that block by the tight end? Nice job of waiting for him to secure the block and then running through another would-be tackle by no Being down. And rising feeds it to him. That was easy. He's ready college, came to Utah, and wanted to make an impact this P. But if you really watch this game and how he plays in this offense, he doesn't have to. Thomas again spins back. Talked a lot about Mike Tafua and, and Kyle Burge from his football teams. That's why he's been here 17 years as head coach. This is Bernard. He will be wrestled down. Holly, of course, you live in Seoul. But I love, obviously, her son as. Bernard pound, pounds forward here. No. Year, I'm just telling you, my dad would be so proud That's right awesome. now. That's awesome. It is great. I, I'm sure so many people uh -huh. feel like that, that, that it had loved ones that never got to see it, and they will. Yeah. Rising was telling me he grew up in something like an impossible dream at one and two this year. But they found a way to turn it around. They found a spark, and man, did they finish strong. And they're going to be formidable for anybody out of the Big Ten. Down to Holly with Kyle Whittingham. Coach Whittingham, in a season like this,